late last night, the, the families gathered in Sago Baptist Church in Thomasville, West Virginia, began to hear the rumor circulating, they're alive. They're alive. All the, all the 12 are alive. And so the USA has the headlines, they're alive. They're not alive. Dead. All of them except one, and he's in critical condition. Incredible news blowout. Fifty-two dead in Iraq yesterday. Thirty-two of them at a funeral. Floods in California. Fires burning houses down across the southwest and what phone call did you get yesterday let me soak you before I pray with a series of Bible verses just so that the the feel of this message and where it's coming from will be on you Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Thank you for the cross, his and ours. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? Matthew 10, 21, brother will deliver up brother to death and father his child. Children will rise against parents and have them put to death and they will be hated by all for my name's sake. The one who endures to the end will be saved. John 16, 1, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. Every radical Muslim believes that when he kills a Christian. 2 Timothy 3.12 Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. You want to be godly? It's coming your way. There's no other way. 1 Peter 4.12 Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that comes upon you. It's no surprise to test you as though something strange were happening to you. It's not strange. Rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad at His glory. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Romans 8.16 the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and children and heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with Him so that we may be glorified with Him. I count the sufferings of this present time unworthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed. It's coming. If you haven't had it yet, it's coming if you walk with Him. If you walk with Him. Philippians 1.29 For it has been granted to you that for your sake you should not only believe, but suffer. It's granted to you, it's given to you, it's a gift to you with a big bow that you will suffer. 2 Timothy 1.8 Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or me, His prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel, for the power of God. One more, Acts 5.41 they left the presence of the council, Peter, John. They left the presence of the council suffering because there's no other way the world is going to see the supreme glory of Christ today except that we break free from the Disneyland of America and begin to live lifestyles of missionary sacrifice that looks to the world like our treasure is in heaven and not on the earth. It's the only way. 
The prosperity gospel will not make anybody praise Jesus. It will make people praise prosperity. Of course I'll have a Jesus who will give me a car. Who wouldn't want a Jesus who gives me health, a car, a fine marriage? I'll take your Jesus if the payoff is right. It's not the way you're going to win your campuses. Dressing the coolest, driving the coolest, typing on the coolest. It's not going to get any praise for the suffering Christ. He calls you in this service, in this conference, in this life, in this world, in that newspaper world. He calls you to another way. Let's pray. Father, help me to lay open the biblical foundation for this, the hope that is in it, the glory that is in it, the power that is in it, the call that is on us from it. Help me. Give us a mind, O oh God. Give us a mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and being found in human form, became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Let this mind be in us, O oh God. Create this mind in this room right now, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I loved, while he lived, Richard Vermbrand, the Romanian who was in jail for over a decade in Romania in, uh, because of the communists and he told a story one time about a Cistercian monk it's one of the orders in the Catholic Church who was interviewed by Italian television and this is the order that is totally silent they sing together they confess sins to one another and they never talk any any other time and a TV interviewer asked the monk and if you were to realize at the end of your life that atheism is true, that there is no God, tell me, what if it happened that way? And here's what he responded. Holiness, silence, and sacrifice are beautiful in themselves, even without promise of reward. I still would have used my life well. I don't think so. I read something very different in 1 Corinthians 15, 19. These are the words of the Apostle Paul. If for this life only, rejoicing that they had been counted worthy to be shamed for the name. The purpose of God in creating the universe is to display the greatness of the glory of His grace supremely in the suffering of His Son. That's yesterday. Today, the summons Will you join the Son in displaying the supreme satisfaction of the glory of grace in joining Him on the Calvary road of... We have hoped in Christ. In other words, if it's, if it's over, the end of life, it's over, zero, beyond. We are, we Christians are of all men most to be pitied. And my question is, why didn't Paul say what this monk said? 